Hi, I'm Kristen. I have been solo parenting now. I have two boys who are five and seven, so five and seven years um, on and off. And today in this video, I want to chat with you about what is solo parenting, some tips for solo parenting and surviving solo parenting. So first, what is solo parenting? It is when you are parenting alone for an extended period of time. It is not the same as single parenting. So we want to recognize that for me, I'm married. I'm married to a police husband, and that is what most of my content is about. But um, a lot of police wives on my Instagram, they wanted me to share about solo parenting, and they said that is the number one challenge that they have been struggling with, and I totally get it. Very relatable to my own life as well. Um, so I'm going to make this video. I'm going to have two more after this, and I also have a previous video where I was chatting with another police wife. I think it would be really helpful for you to see. Um, we talked about solo parenting and the challenges around that and practical tips for like how do we actually squeeze in space for self-care. And so I will add all of those to a playlist. So look below in the description for that. So um, why is solo parenting so hard? Solo parenting is hard because you are alone, but you're not single. So you're not you're kind of assumed to have help from a spouse. Um, and as a police wife, um, our husbands work shift work. So there's gonna be other shift work spouses or military spouses that would experience solo parenting as well. And um, you know you're gonna get help at some point, but um, there's instability to the work that uh, first responders do or fire firefighter wives would also experience this, right? And so there's instability and so you don't really have that stable help um, that you know when help is gonna arrive um, in your life and that can be super hard um, to deal with. So I think that's the number one thing. The other thing that has been hard as a shift work spouse is that our husbands often work like night shift and weekends and so they are gone when most people have help and I think that that's how sometimes our lives are not relatable to other people because we live a very different kind of style of life and maybe sometimes our spouses are there during the week which can be awesome for like helping with if our kids are school age or helping during the day and we can work maybe at that time if we're a working mom. I am a working mom. Um, I think a lot of people who do solo parenting tend to have flexible work schedules or they are stay-at-home parents and that can really be helpful in the family because you are definitely the primary caregiver um, in the household. So my solo parenting tips are how to survive as a solo parent. The first thing that I think is so important is to design your life around the fact that you are a solo parent and it took me time to really accept that. I went in thinking that Rick and I would be equal partners and I believe we are equal partners in our marriage, but when it comes to taking care of children, there is, it's mostly on me. And Rick will say that too. Rick is super active, my husband, when he is home. And I wanna share with you, we've been married 10 years. I already shared how um, old our kids are at this point. So we've dealt with a lot, but not everything. So I haven't dealt with the teen years or anything like that yet. But um, I noticed kind of right away that most of it was on me, most of the responsibility. And that can be really hard and it takes time. And so I think if you accept it and then you design your life around it, it can be really helpful. So an example that I will share in the video where I will talk about babies and toddler stage is that um, when we first had Maverick, uh, Rick was working a lot of overtime. He was working a gang unit in Los Angeles, very, very busy all the time. Um, he was also preparing to try out for SWAT and working out a lot. And I became resentful because I was home alone with this baby. I had just moved to LA. Actually, I didn't know anybody. Um, and also we were trying to juggle for Maverick's first year of life, no help with daycare, no help with daycare. Okay. So that was looking back kind of crazy. Um, I think police families can be a little bit more challenged on asking for help because there's major issues with trust and just like knowing too much about the bad things that happen in the world. And so we were really nervous to leave our tiny baby with somebody we didn't know. Um, but then we were putting all of the responsibility on us and again going back to the fact that like our spouse's schedules are unreliable. Um, I would count on as a working mom 
when I got back after maternity leave, Rick would come home in the morning and I would teach in the morning for a time. So he would come home and watch Maverick for a few hours while I went to teach. Some days he wouldn't be home on time. And that was like, ah, I started getting so frustrated with him. And I started learning really quickly that we needed help, right? So I didn't really acknowledge that yet. I didn't know yet that I needed to design my life a different way. And so design your life so that you assume they are not to, there to help. And then if they are, you're thankful and you're happy, of course. So after Maverick was a year old, we got formal daycare during my teaching days. So it was only part-time. We found a person we loved. She was amazing. And I know that you can too. So if you need to ask for help, even though it might feel impossible to find someone that you trust, if you don't have family around, just know that it does exist out there. I found someone that I, like, she just cared so lovingly for um, Maverick. And then Leonidas, our second child, we had two years after Maverick, also went there for a short time. And it was so amazing. I felt this weight lift off of me when I had those reliable three days of help that I needed as a working mom. Even if you're not a working mom, there are things that you are going to need help with and it's okay to ask for help. That is so, so important as a solo parent because it's normal, right? That whole like idea of having a village as a mom or as a parent, you don't have your village <laughs> the same way when your spouse is working um, shift work or is gone for an extended period of time. And so you need to build up that village. So I want you to think about what are the things that you need help with in your life. And sometimes you can't anticipate it. And I've seen as our boys have grown that those needs change, right? They change based on the dynamic of how old your kids are. I think some things get easier, some things get harder. And I will talk about that in future videos. So my future videos will be on kind of the baby toddler stage and the things that I knew I needed and that can help you. And then also entering school age because that's where my kids are now and seeing the differences in my needs as a solo parent as well. So think, I jotted down some things that you could think about. So do you need help with childcare? Um, and that was the one I had it as an example. The second one is evenings. So evenings are a really stressful time. I feel like the first, if you have school age kids, the mornings can be stressful and the evenings. So evenings, there's a lot going on. I remember having um, Leonidas just two years after Maverick, I had a toddler and a baby and Leonidas was colicky. And I talk about this in my book, um, Heels and Holster Police Wife Devotional. I will link it below. Um, I have 42 stories from our police um, marriage and kind of our come to Jesus, like growth moments in our marriage. And there's a few chapters in there on parenting, several, <laughs> more than just a few. So um, I hope they will help you. But the evenings were hard during that time because Leonidas was happened to be colicky. So after he turned about a month, he would cry between 5 and 10 p.m. like every night. And you guys are probably thinking something was totally wrong with him. I had a trusted pediatrician that told me like he checked him out, nothing was really wrong. And so he told us we just had a high needs baby. Um, but those evenings were just so draining on me because plus I'm not a night person. So I'll go to bed at like 9 p.m. and be totally happy. And so for to have a baby stay up till 10, who I know isn't gonna sleep through the night. Oh, and then I have my toddler who has always kind of been like early riser up at five or 6 a.m. I was like, oh my gosh, just drained, right? And like there were nights when they were crying and I was crying, I'll be honest. Um, and, but, what I ended up doing like after kind of knowing that um, Rick would be working several days in a row where he would be gone. He worked swing shift like most of our marriage in those early days when our boys were young. So swing shift would be like 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. So he was definitely gone those evenings three to four times a week. Um, and so I ended up inviting my aunt over and she would come and kind of hang out with us. I didn't really need her to babysit. I literally just needed another person present. Um, my mom now lives here locally, but she didn't at the time. And Rick's mom, who the both of our parents are amazing at helping us, but lived um, at that time, both of them lived about five hours away. So couldn't ask them for regular help like that. However, they did both help us at some points. Um, so Rick, uh, my aunt would come over and hang out with us during kind of like the dinner time, which is a struggle because sometimes Lena used to be crying 
I need to get like dinner cooked somehow and then also Maverick bathed and she would just hang out and like it was so helpful to just have another person there. So maybe it's a family member, maybe you could hire a mother's helper to come and help you with those evenings that can be kind of tough. Um, there's a lot of options. If you find another mom like you locally, you guys could hang out and do dinner together on those nights. It might not be every night, but if it's once a week or something, it can really help both of you guys. So those are th some things to consider. So speaking of which, social needs could be something that you might want to consider because you're you're kind of alone during those times when other people um, are usually with their spouses. So. Um, and even like sometimes you're, you're alone all day, maybe with your children. And so um, if you have young children, you could look up baby classes to go to. You could look up, um, I used to go to like a mom workout group that was called Stroller Strides or Fit for Mom. And I talk about it still exists. It may not exist locally for you, but you can look it up. And there might be something else. There was another workout mom class um, that wasn't by that organization that was local. So you can kind of search in your area and see if that exists to kind of meet other moms um, and just be around other adults that are going through the same thing as you that can really... The next few things are like homemaking and cooking, cleaning, that kind of thing. So um, groceries, like um, maybe you're somebody that can totally go to the store with your kids alone and you're comfortable. If not, like thanks to the pandemic, there's a lot of other options now like grocery pickup or delivery and I highly recommend taking advantage of those. Um, I feel like sometimes I want to take my kids with me. I want them to learn things about how to shop and like experience it with them and then other times I'm like I am I'm not in the mood this week or today and I won't do it and I'll just do like pickup or delivery um, and it's super helpful. And then homemaking, like cleaning your home can be overwhelming when you are solo parenting. You have a lot of other responsibilities so there's been sporadic times when we have had a housekeeper even just come in once a month and clean um, and that just feels so amazing like sometimes there's been a little spot on the wall that i've been staring at for like a month and i haven't cleaned it and then to see that somebody else came and did it it's just like oh my gosh it's so amazing so i know it can be pricey and especially now that everything has gone up like i've been fighting it it would be lovely but i do clean my own home um, right now, <laughs> but I can handle it right now. There's different stages when maybe I couldn't. Um, the other thing that I absolutely love that I ran last night is the Ufi. So it's like a robot vacuum that we have. Um, I guess it's, it could be pricier depending on your budget, but I think it is so worth it because, um, it cleans our floors. And again, I just run it at night when I go up to bed and in the morning, our floors are clean. So amazing and we only have the vacuum one but there's mop ones too I will see if I can find one a link below and next time if this one dies I would totally get a mop one um, so just kind of think about and and it can be hard to think ahead on like what you're going to need but try to anticipate what those needs will be ahead of time if you can and communicate with your spouse about kind of what your budget is and asking for help around those things and sometimes if you get a mother's helper they might help you with grocery shopping or with cleaning. And so if you literally just need someone else there during the evenings or a specific time during the day, um, or you wanna have them watch your kid while you go shopping or whatever, figure out what would be best for you. And that might be um, an affordable option because usually mother's helpers are like part-time, just a few hours a day or a few hours a week or something like that. Um, and a lot of times I felt like mother's helpers can help with like the trust issue that police families have because usually you are present when the mother's helper is there. So then it's, you're not leaving someone alone with your kids, but it is still helpful. And so I feel like that can be a good option if you guys are having a challenge with like trusting someone um, with your kids. The daycare provider that we found, we got a referral from a good friend who actually met in like a mom group. And um, I'm forever thankful for her because because we had that reference and like I knew her, I think at that time I, I had known her a year and I knew her son was well taken care of and we had like a similar mothering parenting style. Um, she had an education background, like I just kind of, I trusted her too and like her perspective. And then when I met this 
daycare provider. It was a home daycare. I just felt like I felt her loving nature and um, felt like she was in this business for the right reason. She was so affordable for how amazing she was. Um, she had this huge backyard with like so many like little climbing things and toys and then the kids they learned like a letter every month and a color every month and she had just a bit of curriculum even though they were they could have been babies all the way through starting kindergarten so all the way through like age four and she just she did such a good job with kind of balancing the needs of the different ages um she had a like kind of a routine which i'm a routine person and so i think if you can find someone that has a similar vibe as you you can find help that is reliable and that you like the next major tip that i want to provide you is to figure out time for self-care so you are going to have a lot on you so there's a lot of needs when you have children right they have a lot of needs constant needs constant and it can be super overwhelming and you can get burnt out super fast and i have to be honest that I tend to keep doing more and more and more. And um, it's I, I'm so thankful for Rick because he will tell me, okay, go go shopping on your own, go take a shower, go. And he would like tell me to leave because I kind of always want to be with my kids. I love them, but I know that that's smart and I need to take time for me. The one thing that I know because I've seen what it does for me physically and mentally is working out and like keeping that as a part of my life. I've always done it, but it's looked different based on my kids' age. Um, mostly I have done home workouts. So I did home workouts pretty much since having Maverick. And then I did when I had babies and toddlers, I did stroller strides, which is like a mom workout group. You meet up at a park or a local place and you guys work out together and it's like so awesome. Um, and you have your kid in the stroller or a baby carrier. So sometimes I would have Maverick with me in the stroller and Leonidas in the baby carrier. And you do kind of easy workout moves, but you're moving, you're getting yourself moving. And it's just like, uh, so it's nice during that time when it's a little bit crazy. Some people will ask their spouse to watch their baby or toddler um, or use the gym daycare and go work out at a gym. I knew a mom who went to like a YMCA here in the United States and um, she would leave, she had three kids in the, their daycare um, and then she would work out and that was her self care. I think working out, like even on the days of like sleepless nights as a mom, it always kind of gave me energy even though I didn't want to do it. And so even um, more recently I've been doing home workouts and like even if it's a 20 minute workout, I do free YouTube videos and I will link my faves below. So my favorites are Mad Fit and Sydney Cummings. So Mad Fit I did when I was, uh, I think like a couple years ago when I was getting more serious about like doing it three times a week. Um, and I remember setting up on the patio like my yoga mat and I would do it on my back patio. It was like a couple summers ago um, and it was so nice to just kind of have my own little space. Sometimes, sometimes I'd be like, all right, I do something fun with my boys in the morning. And then I would have a little time in like early afternoon for myself and I'd like put on a show for them. They'd entertain themselves and I could hear them. I'd have the patio door open, I could hear them, but I had a little bit of physical space from them and I'd do my like 20 minute workout. Mad Fit workouts are super short. Um, but effective like I feel like I got my abs back um, through those workouts and then an upgraded version is Sydney Cummings so Sydney Cummings um, workouts are a little bit more intense and they usually do involve weight so I just have one set of hand weights they are 10 pounds and they kind of work for me ideally you would have more sets but that's all I have and then I got a booty band that um, are from her merch actually because I just that's something that I wanted to target and she uses that sporadically. Um, but her workouts, like I just feel like I have more arm definition now, just more definition in my body. And it's been like the level up that I was ready for, but I thought I'd share those resources with you guys. So working out is one thing that I do that is so important. And I don't always have an exact routine. Sometimes I've gotten up early before my boys wake up, which is like 5 a.m. because they get up at six usually. Um, or I will do it sometimes in the evening if we don't have activities after school, we have kind of a laid back after school time. I will try to squeeze in before dinner, after dinner, it kind of just depends. It's not always the same. And then when Rick has days off, so when your husband or spouse has days off, it's so important to 
kind of ask for that time. So usually like one thing that I do is I like to go grocery shopping when Rick is home, if he has consistent days off. So right now he has consistent um, weekends off usually. And so like Sunday is my shopping day and I do like a meal plan for the week. Um, I do almost, I will talk about this in my other video more detailed um, um, when it comes to school age kids and like how I plan the week. But in general, like I plan three or four meals that I will cook a week and I plan to make a lot of it and have like leftover nights. And then I plan Fridays, which today is a Friday, will be takeout um, or pick up, like go out to eat day with my boys and they look forward to it. It's usually just the three of us because Rick works late um, on Fridays. So that's okay though, it's still kind of fun. Um, so I think that self-care when I am planning those kinds of things out, um, I'm planning breaks for myself with the leftover days and I'm planning um, just that Friday knowing like, all right, we'll go out to eat. I won't have to cook, it'll be so nice. Um, and that is all self-care too. So self-care can be so many things. Like maybe you've always, I know a girlfriend of mine, she always got her nails done before kids and she continued doing that and she's a stay-at-home mom. That's her thing. Every month she goes and gets her nails done. I don't, mine are never done, but I just paint my toes myself usually. Um, so everybody is different on kind of what that thing is for them and make sure that you can still ask for that. It's so important and you do need to probably communicate with your spouse about when you would do those things if you need their help. Um, and just know that it's okay to ask for that. Some other little tiny things, I have a video where I have a bunch of like practical, easy to do self-care ideas and I will link that below. Something that I've always done is like treated myself to chai tea in the morning. Um, I would buy like the Starbucks mix and make it at home. It's a little bit pricier than making like just a regular cup of tea in the morning, but I always felt like it brought me joy. And it was like, it's the little things, you know, like, all right, I get my cup of chai tea. And even though it's a little bit more expensive, like it made me happy. So just remember that you can do those kinds of things for yourself as well. That are just little things throughout the day to kind of give you a little pep in your step. Um, may or may not be caffeine. So the next thing that um, is a major tip in general for solo parenting is to have a kind of a Google calendar or a shared calendar. Um, I have a Google calendar myself that I put like everything in. So my work stuff, my kids activities, my husband's work schedule. And then we also have a whiteboard calendar. The whiteboard calendar is low to the ground and I, I show it once in a while on my Instagram page. Um, and it's kind of for my kids and for me. So I'll write down like their school days and when daddy is working or not, cause now they're old enough to kind of read. And before they could read, cause Leonidas has just started reading this year in kindergarten, I would draw pictures that kind of meant like that it was a daddy working day. And then I write down, yeah, I already say all their activities um, and anything else that's like really important for us to remember, like friends, birthdays, things like that, that they get excited about. Um, and that really helps like keep me organized as a solo parent, because I think whether or not you are a solo parent, if you're kind of the primary one that is responsible for things, it's a lot to remember. I definitely have dropped the ball like <laughs> on things even with all of that calendaring that I do to plan ahead. Um, but I try to look like the morning of or the night before on like what's going on the next day. If my kids have school activities, we will like kind of put all of their stuff downstairs that they need for that activity close to the door or even just straight up in the car in the garage. So it's like ready to go. Um, because there's so much, there's all these little details to remember and my kids are not old enough to remember them on their own yet. I don't know when that time will happen, but let me know in the comments if you have a kid that's like 10 and they just remember everything on their own, but mine don't. Um, so it's a lot to like be in your brain. So writing it down somewhere and having that organized is really helpful. Um, so a lot of parents, they'll have a shared Google calendar. Rick doesn't even use a calendar. I don't know how he lives his life, but he lives it like day to day. Sometimes I'll be like, are you working tomorrow? And he will say, I don't know. I'm like, how do you not know? But we're just opposites and I've learned to accept it. And so um, I am use the calendar because that's what I need to do, but we don't actually have like a shared one. Um, but we do communicate. So when Rick gets his work schedule, he emails it to me 
and um, then I enter into my calendar. So at least like that's our way of communicating about it in general. Something else that's important is that when Rick has days off, I try to give him a heads up on like what's going on for that day. So he doesn't often look at the calendar, like the family calendar. It's kind of for the boys and me, I guess, but I've told him he can look on there. Like if he wants to know if like the boys are having activity tomorrow or if something is coming up on the weekends, I try to communicate ahead of time. Like even if it's just shooting him a text, like he's just a reminder this weekend we have this and this. Um, he's kind of an introvert and gets overwhelmed by things that I plan. So sometimes I'll give him the choice on whether or not he wants to go to things. Um, but that's another topic for another day. So um, I've already kind of talked about meal prepping a little bit, um, but I think it's so important to anticipate like that solo parenting time and be like easy on yourself with easy meal prep and planning. Um, I think it doesn't have to be like meal prepping and like 20 freezer meals or anything like that, but kind of getting in your arsenal, getting a list of like easy to make meals um, that are just take like 15, 20 minutes or less and aren't that complicated and everybody kind of likes. That's hard to do. Okay, everybody kind of likes is hard to do even with a family of four for us, but in general, things that are easy to make for us, like things with tortillas or tacos are super easy for us. Like um, I will make like chicken a lot, just like chicken breast with salt and pepper, bake it and have that with um, rice, veggies, um, I found that um, baking like any kind of sausage or chicken with the veggies at the same time, like a, a sheet pan meal, super easy. I am vegetarian, so it creates a whole nother issue. Um, my rest of my family does eat meat. It's just a personal choice, so I cook meat for them, but that's a whole nother issue. But I think if your family all has the same general diet, then those are kind of some good, easy ideas. And you can Google that, like just 15 minute meals or things like that that are easy to make. And even lunches, like I do make Rick's lunches. I'll give him leftovers and or sandwiches. And then I kind of have the same things on the side, like fruit, some kind of chips, something sweet. Um, and sometimes I'll put yogurt or applesauce. I kind of keep things the same with the breakfast and lunches. Like I don't have that many different options that I make. I don't go crazy for those. They're kind of simple. And then dinners, I switch up every week kind of what, and that's usually the meal planning that I do, but I try to keep things simple for the days that I'm going to be alone. And then maybe I'll make like a fancier meal when Rick is home. So that's something else that's kind of general that I do that is super helpful. Okay, so even though you are solo parenting, you are not alone. So um, I want you to build up your tribe. So when I moved to LA, I didn't know anyone. I had just moved here when basically had Maverick that month and became this like solo parenting journey, started my solo parenting journey. And I think um, the one thing I did right is that um, I had been going part-time to this like prenatal yoga class and someone in that class told me they were creating like a Facebook group that was a mom group for babies born that year and I joined that which it was a, like a few a, I guess a lot of people from the prenatal yoga class having babies that year and some other moms joined in and we all lived here locally um, and we would go to like these little play dates with our tiny little babies and that's how I met like I still am really good friends with two moms from that group and um, that started building my tribe. And then there's other moms, of course, that I've met along the way. I think when your kids get in school, like you become friends with their friends' moms and stuff like that, but um, that, and then stroller strides, like meeting moms there, all of that was just so important um, because you cannot do it alone. And then my tribe included like our daycare provider and once we found her, it was just amazing. But again, I got that referral from another mom I think that um, that is just so, so helpful. So you, even though it can be hard if you're an introvert, it's so important to reach out and like um, join if, you, if there's like a mom Facebook group or a police wife Facebook group, or if you're of some other, if you're a fire wife, if there's groups that you can join and then physically attend like meetups or play dates or such then, um, or if you're gonna homeschool, you can join homeschool groups. Um, and if you go to baby classes, you'll meet other parents there. And I think just remember to like ask for their number and like and meet up with them at a park, things like that, um, because you're gonna need them. Um, I planned ahead once I would get Rick's schedule. 
I would look ahead and like how many weekends I was going to be alone with my kids like all day because basically his shift like we would might be lucky to see him for an hour a day and it's still like that on his days on so um like when my boys are awake I should clarify um if that so I um would then plan ahead like to meet up with my girlfriends or make sure I'm going to like any of those play dates that are available those weekends but a lot of times the play dates were like weekdays um because not everybody is a police wife and their spouses are home on the weekends they want to hang out with them but for me it was a little different but I did meet a couple of moms that like were totally happy to meet up on the weekends so we would plan that ahead of time and I would like write it in my calendar so that I knew that weekend I wasn't going to be alone all weekend. Um, so I hope that that um, gives you ideas on how to meet other moms and not be alone in this journey. And even as part of your tribe can be professionals, like I said, like the daycare provider. Those are my general tips for solo parenting. Being a mom is like so beautiful but can be so hard and so um, I hope you know that you're not alone it's challenging and that's why I made this video because it's not it can be kind of easy to get in that funk and be resentful or lonely um, and so I hope that these tips gave you some really good ideas and like I said I will add this to a playlist and there are a few other videos that will be on that playlist in the next few weeks um, there will be one added that was an interview with another police wife where we're just talking about motherhood and police wife life and I think you will really get a lot from it um, and it will help you to feel I think less guilty and have that mom guilt less mom guilt um, for like making time for yourself so if you need to hear that definitely watch that and my future videos will be on um, kind of solo parenting during that baby newborn baby and toddler stage and then also school age kids um, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.